Okie dokes. So that's the buttons. Now let's talk about um, how to set this thing up. Here we have the menu. Quick settings is basically a whole bunch of stuff that's super useful. It's basically how I normally access my toolbar after I've gone into the toolbar options and set things up. Once you understand the toolbar options, you don't really have to open it up much. You're going to be using your quick settings instead, but as this is the first time, here we are. Lots of instructions, I understand that. These are for how you set up your hover icons. I'd like you to understand as well, by hovering over that, up comes an icon. For us, um, informational icon, right? So every time I hover over one of those, up pops a new icon, up pops a new icon pops a new icon, or uh, pops a new, you know, informational window. These are pretty useful for people if you don't know much about what's going on. Um, so, first of all, let's do the hover icons. I'm going to show the small version of this because it's much easier for me to do on, on, on my little window. So, the idea is, I show or hide the crosshairs. This is in the direct center of my screen. I then open up a pod. Let's open up, I don't know why my layers pod is not there. There it is. So I open up my layers pod. I make it go over the crosshairs. I make sure no other windows are on top of it. Can't do that. Can't do that. By making this crosshair in the exact center, your toolbar, this is how your toolbar is basically understanding which pod you have your communicating with it's by location. So I place it over the crosshair and I hit on and poof I have a layers hover icon now. I'm going to do this for things like my settings, and my presets. You're going to need to do this each time you run ArtRage. It does not have a memory of what you've done. So this little process with the hover icons you need to do each time. Other um, things that we're going to be going over, it does remember what your setting is, so that's good news. Um, you don't have to re rebuild your custom toolbar. You don't have to rebuild other things. This, though, in relationship to the hover icons, you do need to. Now, why do you need hover icons? You need hover icons because if you want to work in the clear canvas mode, you want to have access to everything. You don't want to give up functionality. So for example, here I am on my sticker spray tool. Here I am on triangular chaos. But if I want to pick something else, like I want to go down to spongy brushes, now I'm on spongy brushes. So to have a hover icon is really important um, because it allows you full access to all of your tool presets, regardless of whether you're painting in clear canvas mode or not. Additionally, if you make your own preset group, right, add a preset group for things like sticker sprays, you can build a preset group that has all the settings that you want in that little preset group. That can be a very fast way of working because you don't have to go in here and pick your different preset groups. You can have a special preset group that has all the typical bits and pieces from different, you know, other preset groups and put them all into one. But now I can do things like change my settings. I can grab it by putting my pen tip to the header and moving it and letting go, and then I have it wherever I'd like it to be. And then I have it all available on the clear canvas mode, right? Just like normal. So that's why hover icons are really critical. They allow you access to all of your presets and all of your layers and settings and everything else you might be working. I would say there are only seven buttons. Therefore, you know, there are, I don't know, what is this, 12 tools? So you have to use not all of them. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> That's the way that works. Um, hopefully you're not normally using all of these every single time you paint. I don't know if you are. Um, if you are doing a setting, you know, a group, if you're sitting down to do some painting of a specific style, then I would just change what goes into those. We'll be looking at that next. So toolbar options. That's hover icons. Middle click, room, zoom, and resize. If you have a two button pen and you set the upper button to, um, to middle click by going into your control panel and going
going into your hardware and sound and going down to your pen tablet properties you only have pen tablet properties of course if you've downloaded a Wacom driver that's compatible with your screen but you can see here middle click is set for my upper button and of course in advance I have hover click put on if you don't have Wacom installed you're gonna have a very difficult time um, doing a lot of things so that's a really critical part of using this toolbar I just I ought to say that now so if you've got that set up in your ISD properties here we have zoom on zoom and resize on and it starts with the toolbar that means this is um, a default setting what it means is I don't have to come over here and hit resize and zoom to make them function I activate them by pressing the upper button on my pen if I hit the upper button on my pen and then pretty much immediately put my pen to the canvas what will happen is I can now make a mistake and this is something you got to get used to what it means is I can basically put my pen tip to the, here and I can actually resize on the fly what this lets me do as well is get really big really fast that's a nice little feature additionally if I put my if I right click my pen and I hover just like a half an inch or so above the screen I can zoom as well by moving my cursor so that's what the movement the middle click zoom and resize buttons do and that's that's the setup for that there's also the delay for repeat undo and redo commands if I hit the settings and I pull up this new window it just lets me decide how fast I want to undo things right maybe this is too quick for you when I hit repeat undo and 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 repeat redo you can change that here and make it slower or make it quicker right however you see fit then I would relaunch it if I've changed it if I haven't done anything I can go back to my toolbar options so and here are my art rage options finally tools toolbar layout if I go here I can now have change what these buttons will be I have my default my current and the and the new one for example I never use the paint tube right I'm a watercolor artist I'm gonna make a watercolor I do sometimes use chalk so I'm gonna put that in there now I save the changes and I relaunch the toolbar and it reappears here now I can go back to small setup and you'll notice I have new buttons inside of here so this is how you change the buttons you also notice we have a different tab for the large or the small what this means is that if you want to set up two different setups you can do this and you can have and, and the, remember the arrangement of buttons dependent upon whether it is the small or the large one it is as if they are two completely different programs running so you can you can actually have two different setups one can be on the small and one can be on the large okay now I'm going to close this and I'm going to go back to the toolbar options we're finished now with the art rage options I'm going to bring us to the general settings just so you understand so the general settings lets you do things like change the transparency very pale fully transparent 200 is the default I'll just have you know that this little this little bit here is essentially like a duplication of this the main toolbar what that means is that if I go to keyboard shortcuts it goes on top of the toolbar but if I go to general settings the toolbar appears so if that's the case you just need to move the toolbar out of the way it's that's currently how the program functions I am not going to relaunch because I like 200 percent 200 for my default value starting position of the toolbar I start mine in the middle of my screen because sometimes I use a Cintiq and I drag the toolbar over to the Cintiq on a different screen and if you do that and you don't drag it back it will be stuck there it will remember its XY coordinates as being over there it talks about that in great detail here with the informational um, tooltip so if you use a Cintiq it's worth thinking about how you want to have it function if if I if I for example hit start at the position when last used and I clicked it and I, then what will happen is if I leave it here the next time I go and I open my folder on my desktop and and I start up this toolbar it will appear at exactly the same position which is nice enable or disable informational tooltips obviously that's pretty self-explanatory this is the same thing about the Windows auto hide taskbar if you want to hide your taskbar because you're on a small screen this is where you can set up what it does as a default 
So for example, if I turn on the taskbar auto hide as my default, then what will happen is that every time I open the toolbar, instantly the, the Windows taskbar will auto hide. And then I have full screen availability. And when I close it, if it says turn off taskbar auto hide, then the task then then the taskbar will come back the moment I close and the, the toolbar. That's what it provides you. Finally, select your starting toolbar. I like the small one. You can pick it as your starting one. Save changes and relaunch now. You'll see the voila, I now have my small one. It is Got a, so I have customized that I want the small one to be my primary toolbar. I've customized as well my tools toolbar. And it will always remember that. I could also, if I want, I could go into the general settings and I could have my starting position be this as well. So now if I go and I were to exit the toolbar and I go and Start it. It appears in the same location as last time, right? That's the way it works. We're going to apply that. That is now going to go away. And we're going to resize this to the appropriate size. That's what that does. So those are all useful things. Now, of course, I rebooted this, and now you see what happens, right? All the panels come back. So generally speaking, I'm not rebooting it like that every time because once you've gone through your toolbar options and set everything up, it's done. It's going to remember all these settings, and that'll be that. So that is these general settings. And then, of course, if you don't like things you've done, you can just hit the, the restore, and, and that's that, which is nice to know. Um, it, once you understand these, I'm just about out of time. Once you understand these, I would like to let you know that you can go to the quick settings. For example, I can show and hide the toolbar there. I can create hover icons and it pulls up the mini window. And you know, just like I did last time, it's not a particularly time intensive process, but it's, it is sure a time saving process. I will say that. And I'm done. Close. Now, just so you know, Yes, the layers and the stencils um, hover icons, if you take the stencils pot out and turn it into a hover icon as well, they will have little quick strike buttons. So these are mentioned and gone over in the keyboard shortcuts. So I just want you to know that they're available for you there. But this is selecting all of my layer contents. That allows me to pick my blend mode, right? That's an interesting little bug we're getting probably because I still have my select contents. Let's uh, deselect all is for D. Now I hit blend mode and I'm in my blend modes. So these are your quick strike buttons. They allow you access to a number of things that you would normally have to enter into fly out menus or into uh, drop down menus to get a hold of. And that's of course since the point of the hover icons is to speed up your activity. That's what they're there for. I will let you know when you move this, yes, I am very aware that the buttons don't follow it. It's just a limitation of the program. They will, however, pop right back in once you let go. So I know that was a lot of talking, but it's a relatively sophisticated program, and it has some setup parameters that are important for you to understand. Once you've set up your parameters for the toolbar, then you don't really need to go into your toolbar options anymore. I, I never do. And you can instead just be using your quick strike settings, which will allow you to customize, change your middle click on and off, create hover icons, etc. Do all this jazz at the, without having to go into that convoluted and more sophisticated um, settings menu. So that's the way this sets up. Hopefully, if you can set it up, you will then be able to take full advantage of the program, and we can really get going on the testing and let you know figure out if it's going to do what we need to have you be able to do. So thanks a lot. Talk to you soon.